I think many Americans don't know that you dated House. Yes. I read that you told him sometimes when you're having difficulty sleeping that you run through in your mind all the people that you've slept with. Does this actually work? Oh, God, where on earth did you dredge that up from? The trouble with doing interviews is, of course, you say things and then they come back to haunt mm. you again and again because, in fact, you know, one is not having a conversation. No. You're referring back to stuff that I've said like 20 years ago. Um, I haven't done that in a long time, perhaps because, you know, um, one's, one's mind runs along different runnels these <laughs> days. I'm more likely to rehearse, you know, casserole recipes, which perhaps is a sad indictment <laughs> of my uh, state of mind. Actually, it's a really good one. I should do that tonight if I'm having trouble sleeping. I'll go back to that. And run through them, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> do you think there's a big gap between mothers and not mothers? You spent quite a long time as not a mother and then switched. That's beginning to... The, the, the space that women have in which they do not have to think about whether they want to be a mother, whether being a mother is difficult for them or whether not being a mother anymore because their children have left home is difficult. I mean, it's nice to think that women have patches of time where they don't have to worry about all of that. I find it fascinating because, of course, now I can't be dragged away from children and babies, whereas I really wasn't very interested at all before I was a mum. So you have a teenage daughter now, and I wonder, yeah. does she look at the peel, Tra I have a teenage daughter too, does she look at the peel Travis hair and go, mum, no? Yeah, well, we all said that. <laughs> Everyone said that. Everyone looked at me looking like an infant woolly mammoth and just said, no. Um, and I had a, it reminded me of having a perm when I was 17 and it was equally okay. ill-advised then. I, I looked terrible. No, yeah, she, she did, but she's a goth now. So sometimes I do her hair up in, like, spikes. She looks so cool. I just thought as soon as she became a goth, I thought, OK, we're OK. Thank God. <laughs> Thank God, she's yeah, a goth. Phew. So in this movie, you play Peel Travers, the, who wrote Mary Poppins, and who was, like you, an actress and a writer. Mm. Did you feel that there were similarities? No. <laughs> um, she, was, uh, she was an extraordinary woman, um, born into the early part of the 20th century in, in Australia. That um, far away? Immediately. Well, what's so interesting is she... She just didn't want to be Australian. And it's odd because she was fascinated with story and myth later. And you think, well, the Aboriginals are the best storytellers of the human tribe. If she'd had that connection, maybe she would have been more willing to accept her Australian heritage. But she was very snobby about it. As she said, I wanted to get out of there as soon as I possibly could. Although before she went left, she toured Australia with, with a, with a theatre group. And there are fantastic pictures of her looking very dramatic with grapes in her hair and things. She, she was um, very troubled. Her father was an alcoholic. Her mum tried to commit suicide um, when she was about eight and she had to sort of stop her really. She was a little bit older, she was 10. Um, and uh, those experiences marked her for life and indeed one could one could infer that she really spent the rest of her life trying to metabolise them and work them out. If you could change one thing about the way the world is set up, how would you do it? I would destroy and remove the monetary system. Which oh, so is... it's a modest change then? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I would just m help to explain that it's a failed system. It has failed us on every level. It is a cataclysmic failure. And uh, that's what I do.